I've been um, a huge fan of your work for ages, actually. I've read all your novels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm very happy to be holding this one. I, I bet you can't really read it in Bulgarian, but... Of course. Zadatkata na staja cześć, dwa, dwa. Yeah, hey! <laughs> That was really good. How come you okay. read Cyrillic? Говори по русски. А говори по русски. So, so, the, so I, I have a few basics. I want to start because I keep wondering how much of this book is actually non-fiction. So, on a general uh, point of view, I would say that it's always it's it's fiction because it's a pure creation of my mind. So it's fiction because I'm not telling a story that, that I've experienced. It's fiction because it's not uh, about a personal experience that I'm sharing. I'm telling a story. So it's fiction because of this. But then it's non-fiction because, or what is non-fiction is uh, there's a, inside the story and inside the story of uh, all this character and the bank and, and the, the, the love story, there is a story between Uh, a guy named uh, Joel and his publisher. Yeah. And, uh, and the publisher, Bernard de Fallois, was actually my publisher. And so there's a little part of the story where I'm telling about uh, facts between Joel and Bernard de Fallois in Paris, most of them. Telling the story, there is uh, Joel, who is a writer as well. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, a fictional character. It's a Joel that smokes. I do, I do not smoke. It's a Joel that lives in a part of the city where I do not live. So this is fiction. And I think what I wanted to underline with this character is the fact that in the end, the one that has the power in the novel, it's the reader. I spoke to Jean-Jacques Cano a few months ago. Uh, okay. Yeah, and we spoke about the Harry Quebert Fair and because I was I was very curious. I mean, we, we all know his other films, but him taking on your book, it's different because when you write, you are alone and then you feel more but, exposed, I guess. But I think the very first step is the spirit of mind of the author of the story. For in my case, and I can only speak for myself because I think for every, any artist, it's a different point of view. But from my point of view, I was really ready for an adaptation and the word adaptation itself sums it up. It means it's going to be adapted from a book. It's not going to be the book. The book is the book. Here is the book. Read the book. Yeah. It's not the show. It's not a movie. It is a book. And what I mean is like when I met Georges Cano, I was already in my mind very ready to, to give the, all the power to Georges Jean Cano. Why? Because first of all, I had complete uh, trust in him. Trust of what? Trust that what was important for me, it was not how he was about to adapt it. It was just for the adaptation to be truthful and faithful to the book. And that I knew it would be because for because we talked about about the book a lot. I knew he had he had felt the the essence of the book. So that for me was a very important step. It was for the adaptation to be truthful to the book. That means all the characters to be in the adaptation, the adaptation to be set in the states, and this kind of stuff. Then for the rest, it was up to Jean Jacques, and I was very happy about that. I was very happy not to be in control because for me it was a rare opportunity to be like in the brain of one of my readers. This is nonsense. Exactly. And, and for me it's the same. A book is a book, a TV show is a TV show. Um, I really like um, how you put all the elements together as in, and then you create this, this world, this story that you are dying to follow what happens to the character. So it's a, it's a wonderful character and a good story that's like a puzzle. So how do you, how, Please tell me more about your process of creating such a story. I, so the process is not following a plan. 
that's for me something very important because I think if I had a plan at first, I would be, there would be like, it would be too narrow for me. We use a plan when we need to go to one point to another fast. I now need to go to uh, a specific place. I'm going to put Google Maps on my phone and I'm going to look at my phone and follow the phone and it's going to be the most efficient way to get there. But if, if I'm in no rush, if I'm uh, visiting a city and I just want to go to a point or another but with no rush of time, the best way to visit and to discover is to just try it because we have our instinct that is the best thing that we have within ourselves. So uh, I really love to be able to do that like this. I mean, I'm, I really love to be able to, to trust my instinct. But at the same time, if I read a book and I don't like it at all, I'm going to keep this also because, I, okay, I didn't like this book because of this, 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 and this feeling of dislike, I want to keep it to make sure I will not use it in a book. A, a more basic example, when you don't like something like food-wise, like, I don't know, you, you know that you don't like uh, tomatoes. Well, if you know it, it's because you taste tomatoes before and maybe you taste it a few times and you know you don't like it. It's like when you cook, unless you have people coming to your place and they're coming at eight tonight, so you know at six you are going to start to cook. Sometimes you are alone at your house and you feel, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, I forgot to eat. Okay, I'm hungry. What do I want to eat? So what is the natural process? Go to your fridge and open the fridge to see what you have. And this mechanic, for me, it's the same when you write, when I write. This mechanic of writing, I don't start with, I write. I start with, hmm, I want to write a story. What kind of story? And this process, this starting process, will then lead to try to find the, in the, the inspiration what will be the, the fuel of the story, what will fill the gap of the story. Yeah, what will be the feeling inside? Oh, thank you so much. That's, uh, that's a, great, uh, a great analogy. I've never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have in the fridge? <laughs> thank you very much. So, it was very nice talking to you. Merci. Pleasure. <laughs> Uh, take care. Thank you. Bye.